All right, joining me via Zoom, obviously uh, this will be on the podcast as well. Really excited to talk about this, uh, talk to this guy. Uh, known him for years, first time on the podcast. He is the head coach of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, finished fifth in the ACC last year. Josh Passner's on the phone. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, like you said, we had finished fifth last year, had done some things at Georgia Tech during ACC play that haven't been done maybe since the mid-90s mm -hmm. um, uh, at Georgia Tech. So really finished out strong. Um, I really like our team going into this season. We've got a, you know, the majority of our guys back. Um, my big belief, Aaron, is for us to have success uh, in this ACC. You've got to get old and then stay old. And we're in that position to do that. Now the question will become, are we going to be able to play the season this year? So, um, <laughs> So uh, uh, that's maybe for another topic, but 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 if we do play the season and our and our team stays healthy, I really like our group to, to hopefully have a chance to have a good season. Yeah, listen, and part of the reason why I want to have you on is because of that successful finish, because of the excitement for this year. We're going to talk about everything to do with the season and everything, but I will say, you know, I've I've kind of adopted this motto: positive vibes only. We're getting football in September. We'll get basketball at some time in the fall or winter. Uh, and I think the first step in positive vibes only is the fact that for the first time in five months or so, you actually got to be on the court with your guys on Monday. For people who don't know, uh, that was the first day. Guys were allowed back on campus a couple weeks ago. But uh, Monday of this week was actually the first time you could be in the gym with them. I think you guys were in masks, maybe gloves. But how good did it feel uh, just to get back in the gym with your guys? Well, you know what, Aaron? First of all, you're exactly right about your positivity. There's nothing better than being positive, and I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I'm a glass overflowing type of guy, sure. so so uh, not not half not not half full, but overflowing. And so there's no question that that our thought process is that we're going to have a season. Uh, obviously, we, you know, it, it's 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 out of our control in a sense, but but we're keeping the positive vibes on it. You're you're 100 percent right. Uh, secondly, you know, per the NCAA, we were able to start working out July 20th, uh, which yeah. was Monday. But July 20th, from across the board, you could uh, start working out with your players, with coaches. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, each school has their own medical team determining uh, which is, you know, how, how to do the protocols. So for us, our players had to wear masks. Our coaches oh, wow. had to wear masks. Um, we had, could only have two people per basket, two players okay. per basket with one manager at each basket. They can't cross half court, oh, uh, wow. things like that. Now, over time, you know, we'll be able to get a little more evolved into it. But for right now, that's where we're at. And um, uh, there's like no more than a total of 10 people in the gym at the time based on, um, um, you know, the full number of, of staff in there. So, constant cleaning, hand washing, all those type of things. So, uh, uh, but it was a good day, Aaron. It was really good to get back on the floor. It was the first time we've been around each other since mid-March, basically. And uh, it was really good to be able to get back into the swing of things and to be able to have some normalcy in a sense. Well, and the other thing too, I don't think a lot of people, maybe they realize, maybe they forgot, and maybe they didn't put two and two together, but it wasn't the end of the season in a normal sense of, you know, usually, um, you know, you, you, the season ends, but you're still around the guys and they can swing by the office. I mean, I assume that for you guys, I know you weren't in the ACC tournament at that time, but I assume it was a pretty surreal 24, 48 hour stretch where, you know, you're around the guys, you're seeing them. And then, then all of a sudden, bang, they got to go home, get out of town. And it's just, it's over. I mean, is that a fair assessment of how last March, how things went down? Yeah, no, that's, that's a very fair assessment. Um, um, you know, the uh, par part of it is uh, um, everything happens so quickly. Yep. And everything happened so unexpectedly. So sure. this, as you mentioned, this was not normal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we didn't even have a chance. You know, usually when the season's done, you're having everyone comes by the office. You meet with everybody. You talk everybody. You know, what's your plans for next year? Here's what you got to get better at. I mean, that was just all. I mean, it was just gone. And because you, you were just, you know, everything pretty much shut down on campus. Everyone had to leave. 
and um, you were just in a, in a mode of, of and, and at the time you're thinking, well, maybe, okay, we'll come back in the beginning of, you know, June 1 when things get kind of get, but, uh, you know, I didn't think it would wait all the way until July 20th and be the next time we actually see our players. Sure. And um, um, so, uh, yeah, no, it was just, and, 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 and that's why at this time period and anything that you're doing, um, you have to be flexible. I mean, sure. to say that, that anything's kind of the normal right now is, you're, 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 you're behind the time. So you've got to constantly be flexible. Uh, I think that's with everything with scheduling, with how you're dealing with your student athletes, uh, with workouts, with just in anything in, in just with the program, with the sport right now, you've got to be extremely flexible. And, and I don't think that ability to be flexible is going to stop. You're going to have to continue to be flexible. It could last for the entire year in a sense. Yeah, you know, it seems so. Uh, you know, everyone's got uh, an opinion on on everything going on. I mean, I know we. I, the thing that I think I stress to everybody, nobody knows anything for certain right now, right? And you know, I I tell people from Greg Sankey, John Swaffer, the commissioners of the league, they're all trying to improvise on the fly like everybody else. I mean, have you given time or thought to? what a conference only schedule would look like, what out of count, you know, like, like, or is it just kind of living by the seat of your pants going day to day and just kind of controlling what you can control? Well, Aaron, you know, part of it is th this is probably the first time maybe in the history of coaching that, that coaches don't have any say on what's going on with their, sure. with their sport and or program. Yeah. Um, because it's going to come down to conference commissioners, to presidents of schools, Mm -hmm. athletic directors state and local government um mm -hmm. and obviously the medical team um and so um there you know as much as probably all head coaches like to control parts of their program and their schedule and when they're going to practice and how they're going to practice and when they're going to play this is probably the first time in history where they have zero say in it and so you're just kind of along for the ride in a sense you're almost literally like just an assistant coach you're just there to support yeah. everybody you're there to support the president of the of the school the ad the conference commissioner the the doctors the you know the state and local government and that's all you can do um because anything else is just not reality and so um it's it's sort of the old saying of just one day at a time i think that's really the the, the only way you can do it of course players always ask hey coach are we having a full season are we playing our conference games and and, and, and I tell them all the time as well, too, that we're in our situation where I probably know just as much as they know yeah, because yeah. we don't know anything more because it's going to be such a higher level of people making those decisions uh, when the time comes. Now, thankfully, for two things for, for basketball, we start a little bit later. We start mm -hmm. in November, technically, and so uh, we gives us a little more time. And then secondly, I just don't foresee them not being able to play an NCAA tournament two years in a row. I just sure. don't know how feasible that's in reality. So they might move it to May. Could they move it to April? I think they're going to play the NCAA tournament, and I really believe they're going to play our sport at some point. Now, it might be conference only. It might start in January. It might start on time in November. We don't know, but I really believe we're, our sport will be played of any sport maybe because of the way it's positioned. And plus, I don't know if it would be able to, to not be able to play two years in a row of that NCAA tournament. Yeah, and one thing, you know, I've been talking about this for weeks, but Kevin Willard brought it up this weekend. He was the first guy I heard say it is, you know, we understand the concept that you can't create a bubble on a college campus, but a lot of these schools, and I can't speak for Georgia Tech, the academic calendar lines up where a lot of schools have kids off campus right around the start of Thanksgiving week and don't come back until end of January, February 1st. So I do agree there are some inherent advantages to basketball. And like you said, I think everybody in all of sports from the NFL, NBA on down understands that it's, like you said, a new norm. You have to be flexible. Uh, things are going to change on the fly. But what I will say is positive vibes only. If When we get a season, uh, one of the reasons I want to have you on, I'm really excited about your team, and you kind of laid out some of the stats, but I don't think people realize fifth place finish in the ACC last year. Uh, if math was correct, I have it written down here. I think it's six out of your last seven that you won. You beat Louisville. You swept NC State, was, which was a potential tournament team. Um, all things considered, I mean, 
is it fair to call it a successful season overachieve right where you thought you would be? Because like I said, I just don't think enough people realize how good you guys were last season. No, you're right. Um, I, I mean, we our, our guys, the way they finished the year, um, um, how, you know, how we won those games towards the end. Um, and, and then, and then you're having the majority of your guys back. So last yeah. year was, it was, it was extremely successful to finish fifth in this league in the ACC is very, very hard to do. And to finish fifth, which hasn't been done at Georgia tech in the ACC and the stuff that we had done during the ACC play this year, like I said, hadn't been done since the mid nineties. So we really took the right step in the, in the right direction. Now we've got to continue to build on yeah. that. And, um, look, we're, we're, we're not deep when I say we're not deep like we, we you know and I've said this before I mean and this is probably for most teams you, we're going to have to stay healthy I mean that's going to be first and foremost I mean early in the year we struggled last year because Jose Alvarado was out with an ankle injury I mean we missed him for for basically all November and, and December and we lost a bunch of games um, so so for us to be successful our key main guys are going to have to stay healthy and be able to play in the games that being said if we stay healthy um, um, you know, because of our experience, because of our, you know, we've, we've had, you know, majority of our guys are back. We have a chance to have a, a have a good season and, and continue to build on what we finished on last year. Now, Aaron, you know, my whole thing is, is everything comes down to guard play and we have good guards and, and to win in this league, you better have really, really good guards. And for this year, our guards are older, they're experienced. Uh, they're a veteran group, uh, so it gives you a really good opportunity and chance. And you know this, Aaron, every, in college basketball especially, but it's the NBA or whatever level, but especially in college basketball, guard play really dictates on a lot of the times of the success of your team is going to have. And so um, and that's, in favor, if that's favorable for us. Um, and um, so that's kind of where it's at. Now, listen, it's the ACC. I mean, this league is a monster. You got the best coaches, the best players. I mean, it's just an incredible league. And you can be really good in this league. You can play well and still lose. That's how good this league is. And so um, we're going to have to really get better if we want to make sure that we continue to move up and continue to keep that building on that momentum uh, from, from what we did last year. Yeah, and you kind of referenced something I kind of want to ask you. I'm kind of curious about. Um, maybe you you could disagree with me if you want, um, but you know maybe you guys were able to sneak up on some people last year. Maybe people didn't know as much about you uh, this year. Uh, like I said, you beat a lot of good teams both at your place and on the road. How do you kind of flip your guys' mindset if they did believe they were the underdog or if they did believe they were being overlooked? to now a team that I think as we get closer to October, November, people are going to be talking about Georgia Tech could get to the NCAA tournament. How do you kind of flip that mindset, or is it, is it even something that you do try to flip going into the season? Well, you know, uh, yeah, we, and we might have had snuck up on people. You're right on that, and, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, to be able to sneak up on some teams. And, uh, um, and it's hard in the ACC to sneak up on teams sure. anyway because everyone's really, really good. I mean, you're just you're, – everyone's good. But that being said, um, continuing that – keeping that edge, that, that hunger, that, that, that you know, that, that, that fighting competitive spirit, that competitive excellence, knowing that what we've done is we, we can't rest on last season. Last season's over with. Sure. And so that's going to be important. And for us to have success, Aaron, a lot of it's going to come down to – our again yes health and, and and how we play and shoot the basketball but it's going to be coming down are we going to be the same team that fights and scraps for every 50 50 loose ball are we going to be the first to the floor are we going to be elite defensively are we going to be the team that shares the ball and 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 plays so darn hard those things are more about a mentality than an actual skill set and and we had that last year we've had that we've got to now continue to have that we can't try to get cute cool you know casual if we play try any cuteness or coolness or casualness you can just forget it we're not going to have a good season so if any of that creeps in mentally of any cool casual and cuteness you might as well just forget it and so it's my job as the head coach to make sure that we don't allow that to creep in and uh, guys stay hungry and, and 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 when i say hungry that 
it's, you know, that, that first to the floor, that competitive excellence, that competitive fight, that, that, that grit, that, that, that playing so darn hard motor and just, you know, all that stuff. So that's going to be my responsibility on making sure that happens. Real quick, kind of uh, uh, to circle back to what we said at the beginning about you guys starting practice. I mean, how nice is it just from the perspective of, you know, you look at your team on paper last March and you say, okay, we bring back a lot of pieces. We have a chance to be really good. But listen, part of college hoops, uh, fortunate, unfortunate, whatever these days, is there is just so much turnover everywhere, whether it's a guy that you're not expecting to declare and maybe test the waters. You guys experienced this a few years ago with Josh Akogi where he just blows up and obviously you can't really blow up this year in the draft process, but you know, a kid just tests the waters. Uh, as we record, a kid from Gonzaga went overseas and he's from overseas, it's a different deal, but transfers have, I mean, it, you, you, you can, there's so many guys across the country that can look at their roster on paper in March and say, we have a chance to be really good this year, only for something crazy to happen in the off season that you can't possibly predict. I mean, how nice is it just to have your guys back and you know, okay, this team that I was looking at, thinking about in, in March is actually on the court with me in July. Well, you know, Aaron, just, just having, you know, because I said it from the beginning, getting old and staying old is the key. And, and then being able to, j j just yesterday, or e even in just, in, in just workouts, whether it's a weight room or on the floor, just having the guys with the, with the experience, uh, guys who are older, who are, um, who've been through it, the veteran, it just makes a world of difference. But look, I go back to the word being flexible. The, you're right, every year things can be changing. Um, and, and, and take out, take out uh, COVID-19 for a second, if, because, if it, because of COVID-19, it stopped the one-time transfer waiver yeah. to be passed. I think if there was no COVID-19, they would have passed that rule. And as many transfers as we see right now, there'd even be more. Um, I do think that one-time transfer rule will pass next January, so it's going to go to effect eventually. And what that means is anybody can transfer within the sport uh, one time, meeting certain requirements without sitting out. So that's, that's no different than basically someone applying for the draft or, or blowing up in the draft. That could be someone coming after the season saying, Coach, I wanna, I'm going to go somewhere else, and, there's, and it is what it is. So, again, being flexible. So I just think – that's going to be the norm, the new norm. Yeah. And, 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 um, and I think, you know, I know we, I think people are going to have to be prepared for that coaches, especially that, that next January that's going to pass. And that's going to be where every year there's going to be a lot of turnover. That's not a negative thing. Look, every team's going to lose some guys. Every team's going to gain some guys. I just think that's going to be the flexibility as I talked about kind of the way the game is moving and evolving that we've all got to just, you know, that's going to be the new adjustment. And that's going to be like, Aaron, guys leaving early for the draft. It's going to be yeah. kind of no different than that. It's the same thing. It's just instead of maybe going to draft and blowing up, they decide to have a good year, and then they, all of a sudden they go to another school, especially once that one-time transfer passes. Fantastic. Last couple of questions, we'll get you out of here. First one, uh, you know, positive vibes. Uh, this year – uh, in addition to the ACC, one of the things that jumped out, I know you guys played at Rupp Arena last year, John Calipari, a mentor of yours. One, how cool was it to get to meet back up with him on the sidelines? I could be mistaken. I think it's the first time you've coached against him. Uh, and then two, for people who don't remember, by the way, you replaced John Calipari at Memphis as the head coach. Now you're obviously at Georgia Tech. Two, you know, you get Kentucky coming back to Atlanta this year. We don't know. Hopefully we'll get some fans in the arena. Uh, one, coaching against Cal, but then two, maybe as importantly, getting a chance to get Kentucky back in Atlanta this year. Well, one, it was awesome coaching at Rupp Arena. It's a great experience. I mean, the, the, the fan base there at Kentucky is just it's, – it's one of the greatest in, the, in, the, in all of sports. To be able to coach against Coach Calipari, who, who I, you know, I was so fortunate to work for at Memphis. And, and the re one of the reasons I'm coaching at Georgia Tech is because I had the opportunity to follow him at Memphis and then – be able to come here at Georgia Tech, but he gave me the opportunity to, to, to be his assistant, so I'm forever grateful, and I, and, I, and I love Coach Calipari. He's my guy. I love him so much, and, um, and so it was great coaching against him. Now, we wanted to win the game. I wanted yeah. to win the game. Um, you know, we had a tough loss towards the end. That was one of the games where we didn't have our guard, Jose Alvarado, but we're playing Kentucky this year back in Atlanta, 
And you're darn right we want to play Kentucky. I mean, I, listen, Kentucky's going to be really good. But we play them in, 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 in November, and there's a chance where maybe – you know this, Aaron. They've got a lot of new guys. And Cal's teams, Coach Calipari's teams, always seem to get better in January, February, March. So I'm, I'm like hoping based on our team being really experienced, we have a good time to get them maybe in November. I mean, we've got to play well. Um, but, but, but it's a great opportunity for us. So I, my fingers are crossed that we're playing the game this, you know, in November against Kentucky. Cause I look, Kentucky is going to be one of the best teams in the country. I just think they're going to, as they, because they're young, they've got a lot of new guys because they've lost a lot of guys to the pros. You know, they're a team that's going to, as they get into conference play is going to probably start taking off. So if there's ever time to try to get them, it's more in, in, in early season. So, uh, um, but I'm, I'm, I would love to have an opportunity to play against them. Our home schedule this year is just is, is incredible. So, you know, we, we've got a lot of great opportunities. And, and like you said, positive vibes. Let's hope that we start on time. Our opening date game is November the 12th. You know, our fingers are crossed that we get to open that season November 12th and can just, you know, continue on moving forward like normal. Real quick, uh, I, I just want to stay on Cal for a sec. A couple last questions, we'll get you out of here. But you're just – I find that, you know, maybe not so much now, but six, seven, eight years ago, he had this reputation in basketball. Some people didn't like him, whatever. You know, he's a competitive guy. He rubs some people the wrong way. It happens. We've all done it throughout our careers. But the people that have really worked under him, the players that have played under him, the parents that know him, I've, I still really have yet to meet anybody that says that, you know, he isn't just – salt of the earth, really good guy, uh, takes care of his own. Um, what is uh, off the court? I mean, what was, what is the relationship? Because like I said, I mean, I feel like most people that have coached under him, you know, he's hard to work for. Don't get me wrong. I know plenty of people have worked for him, but once you get out of it, like I said, I feel like once you're part of that circle, you're always part of that circle and he's kind of a mentor kind of guy. Yeah, no, Co Coach Calipari, is in, he's incredible. Um, I, I, I loved working for him. I loved, um, uh, you know, being, being around him and being part of his program. Uh, I, just from what I learned, I could just go on and on and on. So I, I was just so fortunate to have been under him, to learn under him, and to have coached under him. And um, so I, I loved every second of it. And he's an incredible human being. Look, he's an incredible coach. He's an incredible person. Um, he's done an incredible job uh, with his, obviously with his teams and his players love him. And he's just, an, he's, he's incredible. It's, he's one of the greatest ever to do it in our sport. I mean, one of the greatest ever. He, he, Aaron, if he took over this, uh, uh, give him the smallest school in division one. And I'm telling you within five years, they'd be top five in the country. That's just how good he would be. If you gave him the pizza place around your corner of your street, <laughs> He would he, that pizza place would become a multi-million dollar business. So that's just who he is, of how good he is at what he does. He's just he's 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 an incredible marketer, business person, but he's also just overall just an incredible human being. Takes care of his people, extremely loyal, and he's an incredible basketball coach. And um, um, yeah, I can't say enough about him. And heck, I mean, you know the way it's going. I mean, you know the amount of wins. You know, I mean, he's winning thirty games every year. I mean. And he's, and he's 60, but he's a young 60. I mean, he looks young. So I think he's going to be coaching another 10, 12 years. And who knows? I've told him this before. I think eventually he's going to run into politics and try to run for president of the United States. People think I'm crazy when I say that. Okay. Don't, don't be surprised if he tries to go in that route eventually at some point. And maybe, maybe it's for governor he runs, I don't know, or, or, or a senator. But he, he, he's going to get into politics at some point. I really believe that. So really quick, I try to stay away from politics when I'm talking sports, but what makes you so, what makes you feel that way? Well, he, he, he's just, he, first of all, the energy for, that he has, that Coach Calipari has, um, but I think at some point he'll have accomplished so much basketball-wise. I just don't see him sitting behind a TV booth and just kind of hanging out. I think, and when I say hanging out, just doing games, I think he needs the – the, 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 you know, the, the, the everyday, um, you know, kind of just, you know, uh, 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 fight whatever direction he wants to go in on, on his, in his pop political beliefs. Um, it would not surprise me at all. And I really, and I said this when we played him, I, I think he, the guy's going to run for, 
for, for office one day. I really believe that. And I say that because he, he's, he's, he's into politics. Uh, I don't know which direction, you know, and I don't get into that with him, but, 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 <laughs> but he's got so much energy. He's, you know, I just don't foresee him when he accomplishes what he wants to accomplish basketball wise, that he's just going to retire and set off and hang out at the beach or just do TV and hang. He's not doing that. He yeah. is going to do his next chapter of life. And I just believe his next chapter is going to be in the political field. Again, that's my personal opinion. Sure. He might tell you that I'm crazy when I say that. And he says, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, Josh, but uh, I foresee it. I, I really think, and I think he would be great at it and, uh, because he would can galvanize people. He loves people. Um, he's a tremendous speaker. He's got he's, his ideas, his thoughts, his processes. He's remarkable. So um, you heard it here first if okay. it happens. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you can give me And I told him, I just want to be – I'll be his campaign manager. What the heck? Sure. You know what I mean? I'll just go along for the ride with him. That's fantastic. All right, listen, I could talk to you about all this stuff all day. You got a program to run here. You're back in the gym. Last question. Um, you referenced the 90s and all that stuff. I was thinking about this as I prepared. You know, I'm of the age that I do remember Georgia Tech being really, really, really good. No disrespect to what happened before you got there, but um, I looked it up. Five Sweet 16s from 85 to 96. I, I only caught the tail end of that. But uh, a couple Final Fours in program history, 2004, you play for a national championship. How much would it mean to just the school, the community, to get back to that level? Because we all know the role that uh, sports plays in, in galvanizing a community. I mean, I know Atlanta's a big city with a lot of options sports-wise, but it does feel like when that program's rolling, it's a fun place to watch games. It's a fun place to be at. How fun would it be and how excited are you to get that program back to that place? Because like I said, I just remember that place being such a tough place to play uh, for the Dukes, the Carolinas. And obviously, you know, you're building towards it, but it hasn't been that way last, you know, 10, 12, 15 years before you got there. Well, no, Aaron, you're right. Well, back in the day when Coach Bobby Cremens was here, I mean, it was the hottest ticket in Atlanta. And you're right. Wow. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of options here in Atlanta, whether it's the Atlanta Braves, the Atlanta Hawks, the Atlanta Falcons. Um, you know, you've got, um, you know, just a lot, you know, obviously SEC and ACC football is in the heart, in the, in the in, in, you know, right in the lifeblood of Atlanta as well, too. So there's a lot of options to choose from. Um, and now you've got soccer, you know, the Atlanta United. So there's, there's a lot of different options. So back in the day when Coach Kremens was here, it was the hottest ticket in the city. Um, and how to get back to that, um, you got to win. I mean, there's – because, right, you know, you got to win. But you got to win, and, and the first step of that is getting back to the NC2A tournament. The, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket Nation has been – they're yearning and, and fighting and wanting to get back to – to 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 the NCAA tournament. That's the first step, and and we have a realistic chance of doing that this year. Staying, we got to stay healthy. Got to get some breaks and the ball fall, or, you know, bounce our way. But 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 you know, we are on the right track to get there, and that is so important for the Yellow Jacket Nation because what Coach Kremens had done there, you know, during that time period was just was incredible. I mean, it was you know, you look at the amount of players of the years or rookies of the years and, 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 you know, and wins and, 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 and then coach you Paul, you had had a great success, went to the final four, um, you know, and, and coach Gregory after that, who, who was, you know, he didn't get to the tournament, but he was, he did it. He did a really good job. And so it's now me trying to get us back to the NCAA tournament. And, um, um, and so it's, it's not easy. It's been a long time. And uh, if there's ever a year to try to get us get us back there, this is the year to try to do it. Fantastic. Head coach Josh Passner, Georgia Tech. As I said, I think I've referenced it, but five of your top six scorers back. You mentioned the name Jose Alvarado, who's really good. Michael DeVoe, uh, Jordan Usher, who actually was at USC, not far from where I live. I, I saw him in practice a couple of times, just banging and diving on the floor for loose balls. And I knew when he ended up with you guys, He'd be fantastic for you guys. And, yeah, you got a lot of talent, a lot of excitement, as you said. Uh, ball's got to bounce the right way. But I'm excited to watch you guys, and, and I appreciate you making a few minutes, Coach.
No, happy to do it, Aaron, and, and really looking forward to the season. And I appreciate your positive energy and yep. a lot of positive vibes this way. And um, um, and so hopefully we'll have a, a chance to have a, a season. And, and that's where our thought process and then from there, hopefully we have a chance to have a good season as well.